Hello YouTube! Today, we will be attempting to replicate Xena's iconic Chakram. Xena, hello. The Chakram originated in the Indian subcontinent and is traditionally associated with the six. Historically, Chakrams would have the bottom face flat and the top face rounded to act as an aerofoil to generate lift. However, historical accuracy was never a priority for the Xena writers. So, we're just gonna go ahead and have both faces be identical, apart from the detail work. With the chakra modeled up, it's time to print out the halves on a 3D printer. As you can see, we now have both halves printed. They came out pretty well. To prepare it for the green sand process, we'll need to sand the faces a bit so the build lines don't show up in the final cast. So now we've got the two halves of our chakram nice and smooth. I got a little impatient with manual sanding, so I ended up taking the flat disc on my angle grinder to it a little bit. Still not 100% smooth, but that's really fine because we're going to have to sand the aluminum chakram anyway, so there's no point in getting the surface finish on the PLA version too fine. Anyway, it's now time to move to the next step, which is green sand. So I'm going to pack the green sand over it, starting out with a sieve to get a nice fine layer to capture all the details. And once we have a good layer of the fine sand over it, we can tamp bigger chunks of the sand over it. Now for the second half of the mold, I'm going to attach the other half of the chakra with a little bit of super glue. Just a couple dabs, not to hold it in place, but it'll break apart easily when we take this apart. attach the second half of the flask. And then we give it a little bit of talc so that the layers separate cleanly.
Once the green sand is packed, we need to remove the plastic chakram to form the void that we'll pour the aluminum into. We lost some of the detail here, so we'll need to add it back after we've cast the aluminum chakra. To melt the aluminum, we're using a modification of the Grand Thompson King of Random style of foundry, using perlite, sand, and water glass instead of sand and plaster as the refractory material. This mix is lighter, doesn't crack as easily, and doesn't vent foul-smelling sulfur fumes after every use. After checking to make sure the inlet sprue is clear, and drilling several vents for the escaping gases, we're ready to reassemble the mold and do some casting. After removing the inlet sprue, I used an angle grinder to rough out the edge of the blade and remove the major surface imperfections left by the casting process. I then used a dremel to clean up the groove patterns. Both faces were then sanded until smooth and shiny. For the blue and green gems, I'm using plastic beads from Joann's. They're a little too large for the sockets, so I'll need to dremel them to size. For the gold portions, I hit it with a coat of Rust-Oleum primer. I then used a layer of automotive grade golden spray paint and finished it with a layer of clear coat.
If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Or don't, I am not a beggar.